Yep. All right. Um, yeah, so Casey, uh, I'm from Upstage. I'm going to do a quick intro of our company before we dive in. But why to kind of set this context of like why I'm here today? So actually, ooh, quick, quick. Oh, oh, do I hear? Okay, got it. Good. All right. So we were actually invited uh, to present at the research track because uh, we have a couple of you know research paper that went out uh, about how to pre train the LLM. Uh, but we requested that we wanted to be on the innovator track actually. And the reason uh, for that is because, you know, any of the research that we've done in the past was really coming from the questions and the pain, the pain points that our enterprise customers have requested. And then we had to innovate the way that we approach the problems, uh, which, had, you know, result in some of the interesting research uh, materials that we created. So, you know, my intention of today's uh, presentation is to walk you through like how we approach uh, in training the model and then deploying that at the enterprise customers that we've been working with. A um, little bit about our company offstage. The company we started in Korea uh, by a team of top AI researchers uh, in Korea. Think about you know, the ending of the team uh, started our company. And when we started in 2020, we immediately had 10x growth in terms of revenue and uh, backed by Softbank Asia and launched our first product, product Document AI, uh, which is the OCR, the Optical Character Recognition Technology, along with the, you know, our own NLP side. The reason why we chose OCR uh, Document AI, AI as our first product was uh, when we worked with a lot of enterprise customers like Samsung, LG, Hyundai, and the top banking customers in Korea, their challenge was very clear that, you know, hey, we need an OCR, we need AI, any AI technology to be good enough to replace the humans. So like toy projects are not good enough. They needed our the accuracy rate to be above 95%. So they can confidently replace the, the workflow uh, with the new you know, solution. So, you know, with our document AI, we were able to land like really big logos. And actually, currently more than half of the insurance processing, uh, the claim processing in Korea is going through our Dr. AI engine. And while we're doing our business, you know, with Dolphin AI, the chat GPT came about. And our enterprise customers are like, hey, we really want to understand this generative AI. Uh, can you guys help us, you know, build something that is more relevant for the enterprise use cases? Because when chat GPT started, it was more like consumer chatbot kind of thing. And that's how we ended up, you know, coming up with Solar LLM. Uh, Solar was really meant to be uh, purposely trainable for enterprise customers. So our design, I'm going to talk about design lots of later. But again, the intention here is to how do we use leverage the LLM or develop LLM so then the enterprise customers can leverage the technology within their within their workflow and within the system that they already have. Uh, right now, we have over more than 10 custom models, like domain-specific, language-specific, test-specific models that are under development, and some of them are now available. And um, we have raised, we closed the Series B earlier this year, more than 100 million capital raised and backed by the largest telecom company, telecommunications company and SK Group in Korea. So these, this is our current service, um, you know, current services. Uh, like we mentioned, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, we serve enterprise customers, and that often comes with the um, uh, the assumption that we have to be full stack. Uh, they are not interested in taking one or two component and then you know uh, mix matching it internally, because a lot of times they don't have the uh, internal resource or interest to experiment a lot, uh, as much as like, you know, the small startups that are more innovate, uh, leading the innovative products. So we built the whole LLM along with the embeddings, uh, groundless chat 
and using our document AI layout analysis and key information extraction, we have the whole system of workflow where we start from uh, parsing out the information using unstructured documents to um, chunking, embedding, putting that into a vector database and retrieve to the generative model. Uh, and then that goes out to the customer's uh, database. Our vision is to actually, uh, are two fronts. One is on the LLM side, we're going to specialize custom model, whether that's through continuous pre-training or fine tuning. So that means we're developing the finance, uh, healthcare, and legal uh, specific models, as well as language specific models. And then the second element will be really the, the NL to SQL. And so then our enterprise customers can actually leverage the, uh, the NoSQL database that they have uh, for, for actually leveraging all the database that they have been accumulated in their internal databases. So let's talk about like how we approach the how we approach the development solar. When it comes to serving enterprise customer, we were very clear that we need to stick with three principles. Uh, one was it has to be powerful in terms of performance to cost ratio. The customers that we've been we worked with were not um, interested in just putting a lot of money, experimenting a technology they are not sure what to use for. So they were very conscious about like, hey, if we invest this much of our money, what's the output? What is the ROI? So we knew that like we need to be very intentional about sizing the model and then uh, customize the use cases for that. And the purpose change is again uh, the, the element of the model has to be very specific to the use cases. Wow, I already have very two minutes so that's all the best. And then the data has to be privately hosted and trained also in their private database. So what that really meant for us is um, when we met with the enterprise customers, um, they already had a GPU that they were using for other projects. And they wanted a model that can be maximized uh, using the GPU that they already had. And that's why we chose to develop the model at the size of 11 billion that can often like uh, fit perfectly in 800 um, GPU that they had. I'll just press forward. Um, and in order for us to build that 11 billion parameter model solar, uh, we developed this technique called BUS. And uh, that of scaling is essentially merging the two copies of the smaller model and then uh, retrain it, we retrain it in a larger capacity. So this way, what we achieved is actually uh, we can develop a custom model for the customer at a fraction of the cost and a much faster pace. So our experience is that we can actually create a custom model, LLM, at, the, at least at one third of the cost uh, that the market is quoting for a custom model. And the development time is actually like a lot, a lot less because we're already leveraging the existing smaller model and patching them together. Uh, in our experience, it only took us like three months uh, to really uh, develop a new model for their customers' use cases. And performance-wise, uh, we are you know, very compatible to competitive uh, in terms of uh, the similar size model. But our customers rarely use our model as a base model. They either pre, uh, continuously to pre pay uh, to develop a custom model or they fine tune it. And because we designed the model with the intention of further customization, our model is actually uh, ideal for fine tuning. So there are several studies that came out recently that compare the effectiveness of the fine tuning of solar across other models. And the studies have shown that um, solar is by far the most efficient model to fine tune. And it's because, of the, again, the design of the model was purposely um, you know, designed to have equal distribution of the domain that we want to use for uh, in terms of the data ingestion, but also the structure of that is uh, we made sure that we have a space within the model in a very simple term so that it can be further customized. So 
our exact record have shown that uh, if we actually fine tune our 11 billion parameter model or do a little bit of pre training, the performance can actually go above the GPT 4. Uh, we are in the process of developing finance, medical, and um, uh, legal right now. And uh, some of the one that already came out in terms of translation, education, and e commerce tests, uh, the, you know, the track record have been uh, over GPT 4. And again, this can fit into one slice of GPU at the customer's uh, database, uh, whether that's on premise or virtual private cloud environments. So that's how we are deploying the model right now. One really interesting use case that we've seen that uh, we're very excited about is a combination of the document AI and the LLM use cases. Um, with the GPT 4.0 and you know the multimodal LMM coming out, a lot of you know people are toying around. Hey, can we just use the LMM for um, the OCR? However, what we learned is that still the technology is not quite there. So again, enough for enterprise customers to replace their existing workflow. So we are doing a parallel processing of the, the documents, intelligent document processing through our document AI and Solar LLM, and then use Solar to really prompt the responses uh, into a format that our enterprise customers want to uh, use the data at for. So that comes down to uh, creating a summary medical history, uh, writing a plan of action in a structured format, and all of this can be customized uh, depending on the use cases that our enterprise customers are looking for. And I think that this is going to be our main uh, area of focus going forward, given our track record in delivering the top grade um, document AI and LLM solution for us. Very similarly, the legal side is very interesting. Again, a combination of a lot of documents with a very structured, high accuracy responses that they're looking for. So we partner with the largest legal tech company that have accumulated significant private data around the QA uh, conversation between the lawyer and the, the clients. And we train the model and um, it's going to release like Q, end of Q3 this year. And that can help the lawyers to auto-generate the responses for the frequently asked questions and also assist them with the legal doc legal research and drafting the legal documents. Final side, uh, the trend that we're seeing is all start from the internal to external. Uh, these customers are our uh, existing customer, all are the number one or the top five in each segment of the finance industry. They came to us for our document AI solution, but eventually the use cases are evolving into hey, with this data within the documents uh, that you guys process for us, how do we uh, leverage that information to improve our internal search? And how do we use that uh, data to bring the efficiency and productivity in terms of writing a system, report generation, things like that? And a lot of customers are, I would say like 78% of the customers are still in that internal use case phase. But once they build the confidence, they're like, hey, the the solution that we are providing is good enough to go out and then you know show it to the customer base side. Then um, we're building some you know customer interaction and support function where we're putting the RAD uh, applications to make sure that uh, the responses for these uh, models are grounded with the uh, you know the set of the answers that they are expecting. Uh, I know I kind of you know flew over the, the use case side, but we'd love to you know get connected and answer any questions that you guys might have. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think we have time for one question. Yeah. Okay. Getting my steps in. Hi, right, thanks for your talk. Um do you have a take on more fine tuning versus more fine tuning, or are your models small enough that that's not really something that's that's kind of a bottleneck? The the question is like more fine tune and lower fine tune. And lower fine tune, yeah, yeah. So it really depends on. Um, increasingly, the we're just so our earlier customers have done the full fine tune uh, before the lower came about. 
Uh, but now that Laura, the platform like Freddie Base, you know, some other guys, um, it seems to be working quite well. Um, I think it's too early for us to understand uh, whether we can fine tune over on top of fine tune model because these enterprise customers are, again want to keep you know use the latest and the greatest. So we're going to have to do a continuous fine tuning. And whether the LoRa is for the full fine tuning is a uh, good in terms of like continuous uh, performance improvement. I think that's going to be the key um, key factor for us to you know comfortably saying like I know that is better. But right now we're seeing that increasingly customers are you know looking into the LoRa based fine tuning. Thank you very much, Casey. Thank you for the great question as well. Thank Super. you. Pause. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.